Hey folks, welcome to another episode from the Pacific Angler Classroom. Today we're going to be talking about something that's very close to my heart and something that I think needs to be close to all anglers' hearts if we want to enjoy this sport for generations to come. That is how to release fish properly. Whether you're catch and keep or purely catch and release, all of us are going to have instances where we want to release that fish, whether it's undersized, whether it's out of season, or we are just practicing catch and release. And doing it right is obviously the goal. There is nothing worse than trying to release a fish that is either something you want to release or out of season and it having it go wrong. We've all been there. It has happened to me. And I'm going to share with you a few of the tips and tricks that I've learned through the better part of a decade and a half of guiding uh, to help make sure we can release our fish better and ultimately allow us to have fish for generations to come. So the first one that I want everyone to take out of their repertoire when they are landing a fish is let's not get them anywhere near the rocks. Fish are not made to go on land. They don't have hands and feet. And when you pull a fish near the bank or up onto the rocks on the bank, nine times out of 10, he's gonna flap around and he can't protect his head. A lot of these fish that are flapping around on the shore are gonna get brain injury. And they have done studies that prove that when you release the fish, it doesn't always show right away. It can be hours, even days later, that that brain injury that happened while he was flapping around on the rocks will kill him. So obviously we wanna avoid that. And the simplest thing we can do is never drag our fish up onto the beach when we're going to land them and then ultimately release them. Second thing I recommend, and this is one that I've worked on over the years and I have made mistakes on over the years, is never hold a fish over something you can't drop him on. What does that mean? Well, if we're holding him over rocks and you drop him, we're gonna have that brain injury that we talked about earlier. You're holding him over your boat and you drop him in the boat, that impact's gonna do a lot of damage to the fish. Now, I joke, as a fishing guide, we're sort of professional fish wranglers. I do this a lot and I still drop fish. They can get out of your hands, they're slimy, you're trying to corral them and get them out of the way. It's hard to do. As a beginner or intermediate, it's going to happen to you. And if you hold a fish over something that you can that can hurt him, we're going to have problems. But if you hold him over water, you're pretty safe. We can drop a fish from six, eight inches off the water and he's not gonna hurt himself. So just make it a rule to try to never hold a fish over something you can't drop him on. The next one, and this is something I do with my clients and it's a good reminder to yourself, is when you take the fish out of the water, we wanna minimize that time. There's lots of people that try to minimize it completely and I think that's a good thing. But sometimes we may wanna take a picture of that fish or take it out of the water. I tell my clients to hold their breath whenever the fish leaves the water. And they usually look at me you know, with a funny look, but if you think about it, the fish has just run a marathon and he's probably out of breath. So while you're holding that fish, we have my wooden fish here, if we're holding him out of the water, I tell my guys to hold their breath. That way it reminds you to get him back in the water. If you're out of breath, he's definitely out of breath and it'll keep you from holding him out too long. We've all seen the, or had the experience where you're digging for the camera or digging for the forceps or digging for something uh, to deal with the fish and we just hold them out too long. If we can minimize that time, we're going to be releasing a lot more fish successfully. Next thing we want to minimize or actually take out completely when we're catching and releasing trout species and salmon species is messing with the lips and the gills. You might see pictures of other species in other fisheries where people can do that, but definitely with salmon and definitely with trout, these areas are really sensitive, uh, the gills and the lip. So you don't want to hold them by the lip like this, like you see in the bass fishermen do, and you definitely don't want to slip your fingers into the gills. Uh, there's a high mortality rate when we do that. The next thing is one that you just want to keep in mind and you want to have close at hand, and that's your forceps. Obviously when we're catching and releasing, you want to debarb all your hooks. You can use this to do that and crunch that barb down nice and flat, but you also want to have this really close at hand because this is what you're going to use to get the hook out of fish that are hooked deeply or angles that you just can't get at. You never want to have this buried in pockets that you can't get to or in your backpack. We want to have it really close at hand. I pin mine clean to my chest so it's right in front of me and ready to go. 
And so if in your kit you've got a set of four, if you don't have four sets, get them. If you do have a set and it's not somewhere where you can get to it easily, do the fish a favor, move it around. You can buy these zingers that pin onto your shirt or pin onto your vest or pack and get them to an area where you can get to it fast. There's nothing worse than fumbling around with a fish and fumbling around with a pack, trying to find tools you need to release them properly. Now, another tool that you want in your arsenal is a net. There are fisheries where we actually don't recommend it, but if you're trout fishing, having a net is really, really important. Um, back in the day, they used to make nets out of really, really rough materials with knots in them. And these were actually pretty bad for the fish. It would rip off the scales and rip off the protective coating. But we've come a long way. And uh, we now have very soft mesh or we have rubber bags. And these do a lot less damage to the fish, but allow you to, to corral them in a way where the fish isn't going to hurt himself by jumping onto the rocks, slipping out of your hands. It just allows you to hold him in the water while you're going for those forceps while you're working on it. I'll have the fish in the water and I'll sit the net right on the top like that so he can breathe easily and rest and recover while I get my camera, while I get my forceps, while I deal with getting the gear out of the way. I firmly recommend a net if you're a trout guy, and even when we're stepping up into slightly larger species, they can work really well. Definitely something to add to your kit. One last trick, and this one has saved my butt multiple times when I was guiding. If you have a fish that you're having trouble crawling, being he's in the net, you've got him in the water and you're trying to get an angle to get a forcep on him, or you've landed him in that sort of foot foot and a half of water, safe area, but he's just squirming and you can't get to what you need to do with the fish. The trick is to flip him upside down. So here we've got our wooden fish and I will literally, if he's squirming, this is my steel lady squirming away, and I'll flip him upside down like that. I'm not sure the biology behind it, but something puts them off balance and nine times out of 10, they go completely docile and stop fighting. The other thing I commonly do to keep them from squirming out of my hands, if we're laying on the side in, again, a reasonable amount of water, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna cover their eye. When we're, you know, your partner is messing around with a camera or someone's moving around with a net, I swear that big motions obviously scare them. They're out of the water. And by just covering their eye, they seem to go much more docile than they would if you have your hand off their eye. These two tricks will allow you not to fumble the fish, allow you not to drop the fish, allow him not to squirt up onto the rocks or into an area where he can harm himself. And with any luck, it's gonna allow you to release more fish properly. These are some simple tricks that I've used while guiding to release more fish. I don't always do it perfectly, but I strive to release as many as well as I can. And I hope that all you guys learned some stuff from this and it's gonna make it easier for you to release fish better. These are just a few tricks. I'm sure there's more, and I'd love to hear in the comments section if you have a trick or a method or something that you find really successful for releasing fish better. So leave it down in the comments section below. And if you're looking for more information or you have any questions, check out our website at www.pacificangler.ca.